Hello and welcome to a new cycling season. It's 2022. It is the Australian Road Race and I'm delighted to be joined by Chris Harper of Team Jumbo Visma. Chris, how are you today? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me uh, having me on. Having yeah, a chat. Your, deb- your debut. That must be one of the bucket list uh, items ticked off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't right, so, for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, so we're looking at the... The road race, we're looking at the Bunny on circuit in Ballarat, one that all cycling fans know incredibly well. It's been the same circuit that's been used for, God, it's over 10 years, just about. I think there was a slight change maybe three years ago, but nothing nothing too much. So most of the circuit, most people focus on the climb itself. So we're talking, what is it, it's about 2.9 kilometres at 5.3%. So it's it doesn't actually sound that much when you talk about the actual numbers of it, uh, when you're riding 16 laps, how does it feel when you're on kind of lap 15, lap 16? How hard does the climb become then? Yeah, I think that's the thing is, yeah, when you look at it one time, it's nothing special, but I think the accumulation of sort of fatigue throughout the day is is what makes it so challenging. Um, Yeah, you really start to see sort of, hits a certain point and then a lot of guys you know maybe the race hasn't been that hard but uh guys just start to start to fatigue in that back end of the race and yeah i think that's what uh what always makes it sort of an interesting race so you've got the first kind of main section up the the main road which i think is the easier uh can i say it's almost split into two parts isn't it and then once you turn left yeah it starts to it starts to kind of ramp up. It hits about kind of seven percent. Is it's been a while since we've seen anybody attack on the kind of main road section. Yeah. Uh, is it kind of worth just waiting for the kind of steeper steeper section? Um. Yeah. I mean, some guys have sort of gone on the first bit. I mean, when you turn left from out of Bunningyong, it sort of kicks up for a bit and then it flattens out, and we go through our feed zone um and then yeah it sort of goes a bit downhill once you turn left and then kicks up again for the for the sort of main bit of the climb which is yeah definitely the last last little bit of the climbs the the hardest so uh yeah that's normally where you see people people make their move i'm talking i think the weather's to be about 27 degrees kind of maximum the wind is a a very kind of light tailwind going up the climb, the weather shouldn't really have a big impact. Uh, I think I've seen hotter editions of the race. Yeah. No, for sure. I think, yeah, maybe three or so years ago, it was quite hot, which, yeah, it's just another, I mean, when it's hot, uh, uh, hot I like, but most people don't like. Is uh, Yeah, you really see people <laughs> struggle quite a bit. When it's been a, a hot day, what's the what's the downhill section like? Um, uh, it's quite it's quite good. You're going through the uni, I think. I mean, in the past, we used to sort of just go straight back down um, the climb into Bunny Young, but going through the uni, I think, yeah, it adds another little sort of element to it, especially early on in the race. Um, yeah, there's a few more opportunities, I'd say, for people to sort of try to get away if you're not the strongest on the climb or something. There's there's definitely a bit more opportunity to uh, to make a move on one of these sections that we're looking at here. Um, so, yeah, I think it is, yeah, it is a bit more interesting than just going straight back down, down uh, Gear Avenue, I think it's called. And I think you... But, yeah. Did you not make a, a kind of move on this very short uphill section last year, was it? Um, you, I don't I think, think you, I did. You, I think... Was it a, maybe Taylor Bryan made the move and you followed him? Yeah, I think a couple of years ago, I've made a move on the on the main straight coming back in to uh, uh, maybe maybe two, year, two years in a row I've actually done it. Yeah, on this sort of section, I've made a move. Uh, I think maybe three years ago, and then that's the year. I think it was uh, me, Alex Edmondson, Luke Durbridge, and Michael Freeberg. I think we sort of went from from 
this long flat section because for a while here it's a bit of a false flat um, and it's normally really strung out coming through the the university with all the corners and that it's normally just single file and then you come out of here and there's sort of a big lull um, so I think yeah even even uh, two years ago I think I made a move here as well so yeah it's another good spot where you can make a move without it without it being on the climb do you think that's the beauty of the route I know the organizers get a little bit of stick from the the faster sprinter kind of yeah. Australian riders I th I think my own personal opinion is that the route's a good one because you can attack in so many different places the winning move yeah. really goes on the climb yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that as well. I, I, I can understand as well people saying, ah, oh, it's the same thing over and over. We want to see something different. But I also think you can't really, well, for my mind, I can't really think of too many years where I've watched the race or been in the race and me like, oh, that was bloody boring. Like, <laughs> you know, everyone just cruised along for a couple hundred K and then it came down to a sprint or no one did anything until the last bit of the race sort of thing. And also, yeah, I can understand the faster guys um, maybe don't like it as much, but at the same time, you know, Heinrich Hausler's one here, pretty quick guy. Caleb Ewan's got around in the front group before when he's been in really good shape. So, I mean, quicker, guy, uh, quicker guys can get around this course as well if it's, if it's the right day. And, yeah, I guess you need a little bit of luck for it all to come back together in the the last bit of the race you mentioned last year i mean your result of 10th doesn't really do it justice i mean i watched the race yeah. back again today you look so strong uh and then on the last lap you just kind of blew obviously you'd fired too many bullets yeah. Previously. <laughs> uh, yeah what what do you remember back from last season um yeah last year i was definitely in good shape for it i just went really hunger flat from, <laughs> from uh, one, yeah, yeah, within like 1K, I was feeling super strong. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, pretty much just shut down, went completely empty uh, going up the climb. But yeah, look, last year, like most years, well, the last two years has been probably a bit more challenging for me being um, just a solo rider uh, and bike exchange and normally so got so much depth within their roster it sort of yeah sometimes have to do a bit more than what I'd like to do just to sort of feel like I'm still in the race um whereas yeah this year that's probably going to be a lot a lot different which which will be interesting so the dynamic this year has totally changed bike exchange yeah, yeah, it's they've, huge. they've just got three guys uh, yeah. you've got a teammate Rowan Dennis who's just put in a huge performance to win the time trial. Uh, yeah. You've got who you've got Chris Hamilton from DSM as a solo. You've got Luke Platt from Ineos as a solo. And then you've got Bridge Lane who've got eight guys. Yeah. Uh, are you slightly concerned about your old team having so many extra riders compared to the bigger teams? Or do you think the quality of the World Tour riders will kind of shine through? Uh, yeah, I think... I think the quality, yeah, probably, I mean, I wouldn't say uh, the bridge lane guys are all all very strong riders in their own right. And, yeah, you got to remember, uh, well, Rowan and I were just talking about it this morning for a lot of Aussie riders and particularly for Rowan and myself before we turned professional, you know, this was, this was the race to be good at and make uni SA and try and get yourself a professional contract. So there's, there's definitely a, a big emphasis on them doing well here. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can never discount anybody from teams like that. Uh, they could all be all do really well. But, yeah, I think as well they're particularly Bridge Lane, they've got a couple good guys that can uh, get a good result here. And then I think they'll, uh, yeah, just try race it in a way not to be conservative but yeah try put those guys in a in a good position to do something later on in the race because they've got nick white who's a local 
who won the under-23 race a couple of years ago, who was fourth last yep. year, who rode a, yep. a great race. Uh, Jimmy Whelan, who is coming back from World Tour after three years at EF, who, again, was yep. he kind of rejoined the front group at the end last season. How do you go about planning tactics uh, with yourself and Rowan for a race like this? Yeah, I mean, Ron and I have, haven't actually talked about what we want to do in the race yet, so so we're going to have to have a chat about that. But yeah, I think it's uh, yeah. In previous years, it's sort of been uh, trying to work out what bike exchange would do a little bit, and then you know make your decision on how you race towards that. Which which obviously this year I don't think will will be a factor. I think the race is yeah probably more open than what i've ever raced it uh so it'll be interesting to see how uh like bridge lane want to race having having the numerical advantage um over other teams yeah it'll be interesting to see what they want to try to do whether they want to try put put anyone under yeah put bike exchange or put ron and i under under pressure early on to to try and make a move and spend some energy but yeah, I will have to uh, have to see how Rowan wants to uh, wants to ride it as well. Maybe he wants to do a hundred and sixty k solo TT. I never, you don't know. <laughs> it's, it's such a hard one to call, isn't it? Because looking at the world yeah. of the teams, there's only I think there's only one. And I don't want to sound disrespectful to him. There's only one kind of true domestic in the world of the teams, and that's Callum Scottson of Bike yeah. Exchange, yeah. who is also a good rider. Don't get me wrong, but he looks like the domestic now if the breakaway goes and you guys miss it and there's only one guy left to chase it doesn't yeah. look very good so is this no. a year for the breakaway the morning breakaway yeah maybe i mean yeah for sure it's definitely uh i mean it looks that way when you when you think there's no one no bike exchange with 10 riders who can have three of them peel if they need to fix something so yeah, for sure in that sense. And I think, yeah, obviously uh, Cam and Cam and Luke are so smart themselves, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't think they'll get themselves into a position where they miss something, but yeah, you never know. And and Meyer is, I think he broke his hand in November. So he's saying his, his form isn't quite as, as good as, as he would like it to be or where he wants it to be, which puts a lot of pressure on Durbridge's shoulders. You've got Young Luke Plapp, who was incredible last year in blue because he went too early, but then he's been isolating recently. Everything yeah. just seems a little bit up in the air and it is very hard to kind of think how the race is going to develop. Uh, yeah. Do you yeah, think, it, do, think, do you think it's, it's most, the break? Uh... Do you think you should go for the break? Um... Or will you just see how it develops in the first kind of yeah first yeah I think it's up? yeah it's probably important to see how it sort of who wants to race in the first uh, in the first couple of laps I think that's that's yeah you can't really uh, can't really tell what anyone's going to do so yeah it could be the strongest couple of guys sort of all go in the first couple of laps and that's the that's the day over sort of thing or yeah, who knows? I think uh, I think it sort of the the start list definitely points towards a pretty open race. So uh, yeah, it'll probably uh, yeah probably good good one to watch anyway. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, what's your own shape like just now? How's your kind of winter slash summer training going? Yeah, it's been going really well. I've uh, been training well, so. Yeah, I'm happy with how my shape is for this time of the year. Um, but yeah, the other thing is I just, yeah, I haven't raced for a while as well. So can uh, go out and do do good training and all that. But until you race, you sort of don't know what you're missing. Um, but yeah, I think my shape's good and yeah, as good as it has been any other year. So just, uh, yeah, just have to... Uh, see how the race pans out and i think it's uh unlike other years i've it'll be nice to have a uh, have a teammate with me as well uh especially the uh the likes of ron it's uh 
it's a pretty handy person to have as a teammate. How hard is it to ride as a solo rider? Uh, it has been, I think it has been quite tricky, especially against bike exchange, just because, yeah, they really can do their own race, but then sort of, you know, try and mark you out of the race, if that makes sense. Like, I think for the past two years, uh, I yeah, I think there's always been a guy who's maybe their, their job for the day is to sort of just follow you around and, uh, yeah, if you jump across to a break, they're always on your wheel sort of thing, but they're never prepared to sort of ride with you or anything like that. It's more just marking you out of the race. So it, it is tricky um, when you're solo, but yeah, I mean, lots of guys have uh, have won the race as solo riders, like Housler, uh, Jack Bobridge won it when he was solo with Trek, but he ran, <laughs> won it in pretty spectacular fashion. So I don't think I'll be doing that, but yeah, it is it is tricky. What was uh, behind your decision not to ride the the TT? I just had a uh, I had a family commitment that I I had to attend. Um, yeah, unfortunately, someone within the family passed away, so uh, the funeral wasn't wasn't until the day before the time trial, which is which is why I didn't uh, didn't come and do that. So yeah. Ah, sorry to hear that, mate. Uh, looking at your results at this race, they're pretty spectacular. So third in 2018, when you and Edmondson were kind of solo and it was looking like a two-up sprint and he won and then Jay McCarthy came past you. Second the next year in 2019, uh, where you actually beat Meyer in the sprint, which was amazing, but Freeberg had managed to come past you in the end. And then you were seventh in 2020 and 10th uh, last year. Do you think this year is a big chance for you? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, I, I like the course for sure. Uh, yeah, I'd love it if it was five degrees hotter, but <laughs> <laughs> can't get that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I do like the course. So I think it also, yeah, I enjoy I enjoy racing and maybe the the last two years of, I've been a bit over-enthusiastic and used a bit too much energy too early um but yeah it is i think it's always a, a good opportunity on a course like on a course like this for me so yeah i hope uh, i hope i'm feeling good tomorrow and uh yeah work something out good with rowan and we can uh yeah we can try get one of us on the uh, on the top step and then looking towards the, the rest of the season when do you head back over to europe uh, my first race at the moment's UAE tour. So last year I went back to Europe to catch a charter flight to uh, to the UAE. I'm hoping this year I can do another couple of weeks of training at home. Um, yeah, in the heat and that before, and then travel straight to UAE for for that. Uh, that'd be the ideal scenario. And then after that, I'll I'll head back to Europe from there and start my season over there is it the judo again this year for you yep i'll be uh yeah down to do the judo so third time lucky <laughs> how did Hopefully, you find, uh, how did you find that last through. year i didn't do it last year, oh, uh, it was I, year yeah the year before we started but then we had a positive case in the team yeah. so we we were done after the first rest day. And then last year I had a, had an injury and I didn't even uh, make the start. So, so yeah, third time lucky, hopefully get the whole way through. <laughs> Looking forward to this one. And you, UAE tour last year went really well. You, you were in the split and the crosswinds in the first stage and what was it? Top 10 overall at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Last year I was uh, fourth overall in the end in UAE. So, yeah, it was a good start to the season. And I guess, uh, yeah, the, the Aussie summer, I think, definitely definitely helps that, being able to get a good good hard day in the legs at Nationals. And then also last year we had the, uh, the Festival of Cycling, which was another three or four days of good racing. Are you doing that this year? Yeah, I'll do that this year. Uh, Ron and I will both do it, actually, uh, as long as it all goes ahead with, with COVID and everything. Everyone's always 
I'm guessing now what, what events will go ahead and what won't. But yeah, I'll do that again. And looks like it should be a good four days of racing. Yeah, a nice crack up Wollonga to finish it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, they love Wollonga. <laughs> <laughs> we love we love Bunny Young and we love Wollonga. <laughs> so do we, so do we. Well, Chris, thanks very much for giving it your time today. Uh, I hope it goes well for you tomorrow. I hope you can eventually get that top step for yourself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you very best. much. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.